Well, a couple of days ago, I alluded to the fact that we were going to be making a video on kind of more of a long range update talking about the entirety of what's left of the fall, which is only going to be about 40 more days or so, about another, another 10 days of October and then the full month of November. And then by December 1st, we will be in meteorological winter. It's so hard to believe. Today we're talking about the long range outlook here <clears throat> and we're going to be using sea surface temperatures to kind of figure out uh, what we're looking at here. Uh, I actually have the wrong year. I, I forgot to, there you go. Perfect. So we're looking at a side by side here. I talked about this kind of in I think like two videos ago or something like that. We have on both of these, this one being 2014 and this one being a couple of days ago. So October 20th of both of these years, this is where we were at. And as you can see in 2014, we had this warm bubble here uh, offshore of Alaska, Western Canada, and Western United States. What do we have here? What do you know? Warm bubble off of Alaska, Canada, and the Western United States. So there's this big time similarity here between these two winners. I think this is the best analog winter uh, for this upcoming winter. I think I think that this is the, the closest representation I can see. I think these are very, very close analogs. Um, it, it really is looking close. And you might be wondering, hey, there's an El Nino here versus a La Nina. Well, we're mostly just talking about the Northern Pacific here. Um, these, I'm going to explain in a minute what this is going to cause to happen. But the one thing you need to know is that the last truly cold winters we've had were 2013 to 2014 and 2014 to 2015. And I think this is the first winter that actually looks a lot like those winters. Um, we did have a warm bubble, I think in, was it 2019? Uh, one of those winters we had a warm bubble out in the uh, Pacific, but the other teleconnections were just too overwhelming. Uh, so that's, for, for one thing, that that's something to take note of there. Uh, I wanna take a zoomed in look actually uh, at our uh, this year's sea surface temperature anomalies. So this is actually a day after the one we just took a look at and it kind of explain why this is gonna have such a dramatic impact. Uh, I really want you to recognize the fact that uh, we have air moving from west to east always. So uh, we have these, the, the air is moving over this warm air mass onto the western United States. So what this causes to happen, as we'll take a look at uh, North America now, we see the warm waters here, right there, there's lots of it. So the air is moving over the warm water. We know the wind moves from west to east, so that's no surprise there. It moves from west to east, and this causes these areas to warm up in the west, um, which encourages high pressure, more ridging, more warm air, it's infectious. Uh, warm air mixes with warm air, cold air doesn't mix with warm air. So uh, honestly, this is gonna really, really lead towards higher probabilities of what we've been seeing so far this fall, which is positive PNA, okay? With these warm waters offshore of the west and heading onshore, it's gonna warm these areas up, encouraging positive PNA. But you might be wondering, what does that mean? It basically just means that the warm, the, the, the air temperatures in these regions are very, very warm. And this is gonna cause, most of the time, ridging for these areas. So warm air, ridging. And this is gonna force all the cold air up there in Canada, right? So there's a lot of it up there by the North Pole. And a lot of it has to escape oftentimes somewhere further south. So it's not gonna be able to go here. Uh, because there's warm air in place surging northward. So what it's going to do is it's going to head to the east of that warm bubble, which is going to be the eastern United States. And this is a lot of what we saw in the 2013 to 2014 winter, as well as the 2014 to 2015 winter. So this has a lot to do with why those cold winters were so cold. Uh, so I, I definitely want to recognize that. And then also we have excellent blocking up here in Canada, which is also worth noting a lot of warm uh, sea surface temperatures up here, uh, which is basically, uh, this is more of a snowstorm snowstorm type thing, but it's going to keep uh, these lows 
closer to the coast here uh, and potentially bring more snowfall for the northeastern United States. Uh, if there was no blocking here, we could see a lot of these storms move like this, which would bring snow to the fish. And yeah, nobody nobody really cares about that, right? So uh, <laughs> that's the big difference here. If there's blocking here, a lot of times the storms will get caught uh, eastward, which will bring snowfall uh, to these eastern regions. Okay, now let's take a look at how some of those winters went. This is 24. 2013, better yet, the 2014. We had some cold here already in September, which is kind of similar to this year, but we had cold in the southwest too, you know, so that's a little different. October was cold out west and warm in the east. I don't think that's how October will end up looking, uh, just based on how cold it has been at times. Uh, but November went down as a very cold month here in 2013 to 2014. We could see there was some really big troughing, but not really any um, ridging in the west. 2014 is going to be the much closer uh, comparison, by the way. So, sorry, I'm jumping all over the place here. Here's December. We can see a lot of cold air was locked up here in Canada, but we can see that by January, this moves well into the United States. And if you remember this winter, it was very frigid. Um, we did get the positive PNA, as you can see, later on this winter uh, in, in 2013, where this area was very warm and this cold was forced into here. You can literally see it. I don't even have to tell you where the cold is coming from and where it's going and why it's going where it's going. Clearly, there's warm air from Alaska southward through western Canada, western United States, west, western Mexico, and it's forced into the eastern United States. Uh, and also with this blocking here in these regions, when we have winters like this plus the positive PNA, where's the cold going to go? It's literally like funneled through uh, into the eastern United States. February went down as an even colder month for some spots, especially up here where we had the polar vortex making an appearance. That was kind of the first year where that term became very popular, uh, the polar vortex. And then as we can see, March went down as another cold month. So we got one of those extended winters, a very, very cold winter overall. Now, 2014 to 2015, which is a much closer comparison, we can see, again, positive PNA now showing up for September here. So very similar. Um, we see a lot of cold, cooler air moving down into the eastern United States. I wouldn't say necessarily cold. Uh, but by October, things warmed up a bit. But I think this could look pretty similar to what this October will go down as. We, we're going to see warming, obviously, here later in the month of October for the eastern United States. We will see some cooling last minute here. I think the west could go down as a little bit colder this, this October as opposed to 2014 October. But that's just my opinion. Now... As we reach November, this is when the deep cold moves in. Uh, we can see that there isn't really an established positive PNA onshore, but we can see that there is warm air temperatures here just offshore. And we can see a lot of it here for the southwest as well. And I think this is why we see a lot of the cold heading into the central United States as opposed to the eastern United States, because we're seeing the warm air temperatures a little bit further uh, to the west. So we're seeing the cold a little bit further west as well. But, I mean, really, everywhere... The east of the Rockies is cold here, as you can see. So I think everybody would, uh, every cold lover would enjoy that. Now, December went down as a pretty warm month, pretty torchy, right? I mean, it's pretty close to normal throughout a lot of these areas here, but it is a warmer month overall. It's January when the real fun began, and this is when we started to see the real cold move in um, for the eastern United States, the south central United States down here as well. And we could see that there is a well-established positive PNA over here in the West. Now for February, this is when the real winter got started. We see the positive PNA. Once it got started, it didn't really stop. We can see it's still hanging out out here, uh, well, well established, and we can just see deep Arctic air in the entire eastern United States for the month of February of 2015. This is the type of effect, I hope I'm getting my point across, that a, a consistent positive PNA can have on winters. Um, when you see the West being consistently warm, uh, really we get a positive PNA that cannot be broken. And it might feel familiar because that's what we've dealt with uh, throughout September and October. So if that's a sign of things to come, this could be the first winter that is reminiscent of 2013 to 2014 and 2014 to 2015. Now, here's the upcoming temperatures. So as we can see, it's basically the opposite. Negative PNA. This forces the warmer air into the east, like I mentioned, for uh, October 23rd through the 28th. Now, as time moves on, though, 
we can see that we are expected to get back into a bit of a positive PNA. We see some warmer temperatures up here. It's not looking too classic, but we can see that some colder temperatures are expected for the eastern United States, potentially around November 7th through November 12th, but that is pretty far out, so take it with a grain of salt. This hangs out all the way through the 19th, where we still have this warm bubble out here, and we have cold air in the eastern uh, third, I would say, of the nation. And that lasts quite a while on this model, and then we get kind of confused here, uh, where there's cold out here, there's cold over here, kind of not a lot to take away. Um, but then we end up back in a pattern for the first week of December, potentially. This is very far out, though, so again, take it with a grain of salt, but potentially getting cold in the west again, warm in the east again. But... We could see a winter where we see a warm December, just like 2014 to 2015, but then everything is up from there. Colder in January, and then February being even colder than, um, than January, so it's kind of one-upping itself. That would be kind of a late winter. Sometimes you see a winter like 2010 where you see a massive blizzard in December, and it's kind of downhill from there. So only time will tell what kind of winter we end up with, but I know, I know that a positive PNA will be much more likely most of the time compared to a negative PNA, which is a really good sign for cold in the east. Uh, and oh, cold in the east is a really good sign for snow in the east. Now, one more thing before we get going. This is just something to get you guys excited, you snow and cold lovers, which I know there's plenty of you. Here is our season to date total snowfall. We can see that there's some blues in there, some pinks in there, indicating, well, the blues two to six inches, and then the pinks about 10 to 20 we see some of those for the very highest elevation regions of the Rockies. We see some of that there for Michigan and Wisconsin. A lot of snowfall up there. Here is the next 10 days of snowfall. Look at how much more we're going to end up seeing, how much we're going to add to our season total out west um, just over the next 10 days. Definitely a sign of things to come. Definitely something that's going to encourage uh, colder air because the more of a snowpack we get up here in Canada the more this cold air is going to be potent when it makes its way down because it's going to be moving over this ice and the snow and all of that. It's, it's really going to lead towards um, some even deeper cold, getting this snowpack going early. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. These are just a few thoughts I've really wanted to talk about over the course of the last week or so. I've been thinking about this a lot, and I really wanted to get this across to you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's not my typical video, but I hope you guys Still enjoyed it regardless. Be sure to subscribe for daily uploads where we will update you guys on the upcoming pattern every single day. Also, be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I will see you guys in the next video.